Just show them that little bit of extra attention, teach them that new trick or change the way that you feed them. Their health will improve, their mental well-being will improve and your relationship with your pet will improve. And what more could we ask for than that? Welcome to the Call the Vet Show, the podcast that helps pet parents understand and optimize the health of their furry family so they can live the full and happy life you want for them. And here's your host, veterinarian Dr. Alex Avery. Hello, Seasons Greetings. Welcome along to another episode of the Call the Vet Show. I hope you're managing to take some time off over the festive season. I've got a few days off between Christmas and New Year, which is really fantastic. And then I've actually got another couple of weeks off at the end of January, which I'm really lucky to have. And I'm really looking forward to it summer down here in New Zealand. So I'm looking forward to getting away, hopefully having a little bit of sun and a bit of beach time. We're lucky that at the moment the country is pretty open. The vaccine rollout has been really good and the uptake has generally been incredibly positive. So yeah, really excited to having a little bit of R&R, spending some time with the kids while they're on their summer holiday. It's amazing how quickly they grow up and yeah I really need to make the most of it so I'm looking forward to taking some time off and I hope you are too and I really wanted to close the year out with I guess a little bit of a philosophical question about how we are looking after our pets and how more importantly we're expressing our love for them because A lot of the time we think that giving them treats, giving them a little bit of an extra helping, uh, letting them lick our plates clean after we finished our dinner or even reserving a little bit of the, the main meal for our pets. And that's dogs and cats. And we think that that is a way of showing our love. But I really want to be talking about how that's not the case and that's actually not the best way to show your love for your pet. So let's jump into it. And now on with the show. And so this topic, it really fits in with something that I've been thinking a lot more about this year. I mean, clearly as a vet, I'm focused on the physical health of my patients, of the dogs and cats that come to see me in the clinic. But I think a lot of the time we forget about the mental well-being of our dogs and cats. I think we forget how bored they can get how boring their lives can be how little stimulation they get you know very often we lead very busy lives and okay things have been a little bit different over the last couple of years with us spending more time at home and that's why there's been an explosion in pandemic puppies and the number of cats that people have brought into their lives has equally climbed but a lot of the time they're left to their own devices for a long period of time without really anything to stimulate their brains, to keep their interests. And so they get separation anxiety, they develop boredom, frustration, they bark all the time and annoy your neighbours, they destroy your furniture, get into all kinds of mischief, and ultimately they're just not living their best life. But we do love our pets, they are part of the family, and I know that you feel that too. And so we really want to show our love and express our love. And we do that through food because, you know, let's face it, if you give your dog their favorite treat, if you get the the pack of crunchies out for your cat, you know, they come up to you, they, you know, show you lots of attention. They seem to really enjoy those treats. But I think the key here is, is that they enjoy that attention as much as anything else. And the attention by itself doesn't come with any extra problems, which giving food as a marker of our love does. So you'll have heard me talk time and again about the fact that carrying extra weight has a big impact on the health of our pets. So actually, by expressing our love through giving food, giving extra treats by keeping their food bowl topped up all the time, we're actually shortening our pets lives we're shortening the time that we're able to spend with them and this can be as extreme as for a dog shortening their life by as much as two years which is almost 20 percent of their life that is being almost stolen from them and stolen from you you can't get that time back to share with your dog to have them as part of your family and even if they don't get diabetes they don't get crippling arthritis their general health doesn't overtly suffer just being overweight just carrying that extra few pounds that's might be all it takes 
has been shown time and again to reduce their vitality, to reduce their feelings of well-being. So they themselves are not as happy and active and able to enjoy their life as they would be were they slimmer. And of course, not every dog who gets treats is going to be really porky. Not every cat who has their food bowl topped up every now and then is going to be hugely obese. But unfortunately, the reality is that obesity and being overweight affects well over 60% of our pet dogs and cats. In some areas, it's an awful lot more than that. So to, so to say this is not a problem or it's not a problem with, with my dog or with my cat uh, is, is potentially putting the blinkers on and denying what the statistics show time and again. And, and it mirrors what I see in my consult room. This is exactly the reality that I am seeing. And I have seen everywhere I've practiced, both in the UK and here in New Zealand. And so I want you to really change your thinking. And that's not to not give treats, you know, give your pets treats. That's absolutely fine. But we really need to dial back the amount. We need to certainly be cutting out all those food scraps. So we've not finished our dinner here. The dog will have it, lick the plate and and do the job of pre-washing, if you like, before you put your crockery in the dishwasher. I mean, that's certainly what used to happen in my house growing up. We need to stop that because that's not doing them any favours at all. The things that we're eating and often the things that we're leaving, the bacon rind, that kind of thing is really not healthy at all. Let's switch to low fat treats, some air pop popcorn, some rice crackers, some green beans, some carrot. These things, you know, your dogs will love. They'll love that extra different textures, the crunch, the the different flavors. They'll really appreciate that and they'll enjoy that as a treat. We're not going to be piling on the pounds by giving those. And I also want you to think about how you're feeding your pet. So this goes with how you're giving them their treats, but also how you're giving them their main meals of the day. Get rid of that food bowl, chuck it out, put it in the rubbish and instead feed them in a way that they have to use their brain. So this could be as simple as getting a a, an empty plastic bottle and cutting a hole in it, which your pet will then have to roll around, move around for that food to fall out throw it in the long grass when the weather's good so they have to snuffle around and they have to find their food that way we can use snuffle mats we can use kongs there's all manner of different feeding toys puzzle feeders games that you can play that will stimulate their brain it will make meal times last longer or treat times last longer that anticipation for getting something really tasty that you know that your dog is going to love is going to be heightened if they have to work for it and it's the same with our cats it's also going to mean that they're less likely to gobble down their food in two seconds flat and then look at you with hungry eyes because their stomach hasn't had chance to register so it's going to reduce the amount that they're going to overeat as well so really consider how you're feeding your pet as much as what you're giving and as much as the different types of treats and the different variety of diets that you want to give but really what I would be encouraging you to do is actually give your dog and give your cat attention Give them your attention. That is the most valuable reward. The most valuable thing that they will treasure is your attention. And not only is that going to make them happier, it's going to improve the bond that you have. It's going to give you a better relationship with your pet. And this attention can be exercising them, taking your dog out for a walk, playing with them, engaging them in different play. So get that tug toy out, um, start training them in new tricks. For your cats, you know, use different toys, the the feather on the end of a fishing rod, you know, just playing different games with them. How about training them to use a harness or even training them with different tricks? You know, we think that cats can't be trained, but absolutely they can. And if you put that effort in, you will be rewarded as well. I think your journey as a pet parent will be richer and their life will be improved as well. Helping your pet live the happy, healthy life they deserve. So while it's the festive season and the season for overindulgence, I would encourage you to exercise a restraining hand when it comes to overloading your pet with food treats at all times of year. And as we move into the new year and we make those resolutions, maybe resolve to just show them that little bit of extra attention, teach them that new trick or change the way that you feed them. Their health will improve their mental well-being will improve and your relationship with your pet will improve. 
and what more could we ask for than that? So I'm off until February now. I'm going to be releasing a couple of my favourite snippets from the podcast archive over January. So I really hope you enjoy those. And I will be back with you in February with some great conversations, with some new guests and with some really important topics just like this one that really close to my heart. So all that's left is to wish you a very Merry Christmas, a fantastic new year, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. That's it for this episode of The Call the Vet Show. Be sure to visit callthevet.org to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. We'll see you next time.